All right, hello world. This time it was not exactly intentional to get the sprite going right at the start, but like, why not? Start a stream, have a little drink, get it going a little bit. See how the keyboard camera's doing there. It's okay, I could probably get a little lighter, but that'll be okay. Why is that that size? Uh, so that's the right size. Oh, did I switch localhost or something? Did I localhost 100%? Aha! I guess we should do that. Getting the size set up for seeing on smaller screens or whatever. Um, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing all right. Uh, Twitch checklist, duplicate tabs, part charm, we'll use this in a second. So, uh, what are we gonna do this, uh, this stream? For this stream, wait, that's the same page, right? Right, okay. So we only need one of them. Oh, I should use my uh, close duplicate tabs command. I've got a, I did that yesterday. Which I need to post about. Here, let me write that down. Post about close duplicate tabs. You can't see that because it's on the other screen, but that's okay. Uh, so what are we doing today? Um, so a few things to try for today. Uh, we'll see how far we get across a couple of them. Um, is So I use Keyboard Maestro. I've been using it a decent amount recently. Um, not a huge amount, but it's, uh, it's what I've got set up. So I've got hotkeys that move my windows um to resize everything for streaming um because i the what you see is not the full screen I, the, but it's the best balance i found in terms of uh cropping in on the screen a little bit and raising the font up so you can still kind of see the ui uh or the the system elements basically um all these things um because if i just made everything full screen and then zoomed in or like, and then made the fonts bigger so that the windows text look readable on smaller videos, all those, those elements would be just super tiny. So this is kind of the balance I've had. Um, and it's, uh, oh, actually here, I just realized, oh, why did that work? There it goes. This is gonna get all meta for a second. But so that's, you can see like I've got all this area around here. So the keyboard maestro just basically zooms stuff in. Oh, actually, yeah, so hang on a second. I could actually do this, right? That's what I see, basically. Um, and so, the other thing I realized, because the other thing that I do is like in Sublime Text, uh, I, I up the font size um, and in Sublime Text too, same thing uh, to make that readable. I kind of, I, I still need to go back and see, I think 28 lines is about the right number of lines to put um, to, to make it easy enough to read at a smaller size. So that's a 22 point font size here and on sublime text three it's a 16 point font but with this 1.3 ui scale because on sublime text you can actually the ui scale actually updates these outside numbers right whereas in um sublime text two maybe there's different ui elements i don't know somewhere there's other elements that it doesn't uh that it updates or doesn't i don't know i just heard to do this so that's what i'm doing uh but so I set those every time uh, I start up the stream because I don't keep the I generally don't keep the fonts this big when I'm actually just using the machine and doing stuff off stream. Like it's more like 14. So that. Um, but you've got a big enough monitor, you can read that on stream. But again, I want to I want to make sure that it's works for people who have smaller monitors. Um, so there's that. Uh, but what I've got, so what I did, what I've got, what I did, whatever, is I figured out that, so in Sublime Text, the config file is just a straight text file. 
or, or the preferences file. And it also updates live. So like this, I'm editing the file. And if I edit this file and go to 22 and hit save, it jumps up to the 22 point font. And if I go back down to 14, same thing. So what I tried to do and what I figured out how to do is I wanted to, to basically adjust this file. Um, the, the file is in a library folder um, on Max. It's uh, your home directory and then libraries, application support, Sublime Text 2, something, 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 preferences.sublime text or preferences.sublime settings. So I found that file. Actually, I'll tell you where it is in just a second. Um, and that I used sed, S-E-D, the command sed, um, which lets you basically look through a file and make replacements in the file. Because I was thinking at first, I was like, oh, I could open the file, run it line by line through a some, like a Python script or something, and then look for font size equals, for example, 14 and then make it 22, or 22 and make it 14, depending on which way I was going. But I kind of remembered there was a way to do it. And I couldn't remember if it was awk or sed, um, and so sed is actually the, the command that you can use. And with sed, um, it's neat because you go, I'll actually get down to it right now. Um, so library application support, sublime text two, I'm just going to go there and see what's in here. Um, packages, users up there. Yeah. So here's, here's the file. It's this one right here. So if we cat it and just print it out, that is not the right file. Preferences. There you go. So this is the same thing we're seeing here. What said lets you do is make um, find and replace. I actually don't know what said stands for. Um, man said. Stream editor, okay. Uh, said utility reads the specified files or the standard input if no file is specified, modifying the input as specified by a list of commands. The input is rewritten to standard output. Um, and so what that means is if we go said, uh, hang on a second, cat preferences. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna copy this preferences file up to our desktop, just so we don't mess with too much stuff. And we're gonna go to our desktop. There we go. Um, cat. I need to start clearing off the desktop a little bit more. This might go away soon. Also, desktop storage, I should move Django tutorial, new closer, 22. Yeah, so I can, I need to move all that stuff. I can get rid of all of it as soon as I make some changes. Anyway, so if we cat it, which is just, I actually forget what cat stands for. Concatenate and print files. It really just spits it out. Um, so what I'm targeting here is this font size 14. And so as said, you pass it a, I think I'm gonna get this right. So we wanna do a substitution. First slash is, so substitution and then slash, and then we can tell it what we're looking for. So we're looking for um, font size. Next slash says, now what do we wanna replace it with? And we're just gonna replace it with that. And then go. Oh, wait, we gotta give it the file that we wanna do. And then we give it pref and then we give it the file that we wanna do. And so right here, you can see that it picked up font size and flipped it over to the, all this ASDF. Sweet. So that's that's it. So you don't have to like write a script to go open the file, grab the file, do whatever. You can just pass it through sed and make your edits in place uh, or in as it moves forward. which is super cool. Uh, it gets a little tricky when you're trying to do um, some re uh, regular expressions. So if you wanna match something in general and not specific, um, and what I had to do, so there's there's different regular expression engines basically. Um, so I use 
the dash E one because it's the easiest one to use for me. Um, but if we are substitution again, and this time I'm actually good at, well, actually here, hang on, let's cat, uh, preferences file again. So I'm just going to grab all of this to start with. So said, I'm going to go ahead and do dash E because I know that that's what I'm going to want in a minute. Um, substitute all of that jazz with this. Uh, you can also do global here if you need to do it multiple times in a file, but we don't. Um, so, boop, there we go. So we just took out that whole line. So now what I want to do is go back and start rebuilding the line. And so I've got quotes in here. So I'm inside single quotes for the command. So I can put double quotes inside of that and not have to worry about it exploding. Um, whoops, cont size. It's like cont size, but it's font size. Font size. Quote, dip, dip. 22.0. So now, there it is. So if I cat it, it's still 14 because I haven't adjusted the file. But when I read the file in and, and pass it through said, the output of said is 22. So that so it does that replacement. And the reason I did all the font size and stuff is to make sure that I'm only hitting that line. Like I don't want to just look for 14 in there. Um, in fact, I want to make sure that no matter what number is in there, I hit it. And so the way that we do that, um, with this dash E there, we can do uh, some regular expression stuff. And that is going to look like this. So we're going to make a group of characters that we want to have. And we're going to go 0 to 9, so all the numbers. And then we want to do a plus, because we want one or more of that. So this would get font size 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's all one digit. 10 through 99 is two digits. Three, like any number of digits it's going to grab. Uh, we've got a dot there, which means any character, but it's also the dot where we want it, so we can leave that. And then the zero, we want to do the thing, same thing, where we do zero, dash nine, plus. And hopefully, we'll still see our output having font size 22. We do. Cool. So that's how we do the replacement. And that way, if... Um, if the preferences file had, uh, so if the preferences file has 15 in here, I'm not hard coded to look for 14. It'll still find this number. So here's, now it's saved with 15 in it. So here's 15 and we run it through set again. It finds it because of that regular expression. Uh, super powerful, also often a pain. The base, you, it, it's it's worth getting the basics of regular expressions kind of down in your in your fingers a little bit. Um, but so now the other thing that we need to do is I don't want just I don't I don't want that to output to just go to the terminal window. I want it to go back into the file um, later. Um, So we got this, and then what we want to do is the way that we fix this is we come here and we go I for in place, but on Max that doesn't directly work. You have to do I in place and then do two quotes right here. Um, and so just to show this, and here we'll do this. Um, I didn't run it. So here's the here's the file. So it's got 15 in there right now. Oops. If we run this, but we pass I for in place and then quotes. And so basically what that's doing is it's really saying, hey, I want to back up to a different file. And I want to add an extension to the backup, which normally you would do like dot back there. So like we could actually do that dot back. I think. Ooh, or did that update? I may be wrong. Oh, that updated. Okay. Yeah, so anything just in there, that, that does it. So that just did the update. You just need to have that dash I space and then some quotes and apparently anything in there. Um, and that, that makes the update. So now we're at 22. Um, and so that's 
I wanted to be able to do that. And then what I did was I dropped that into Keyboard Maestro. So let me drop this. Get rid of this one since we're done with it. Thank you. That'll close and it'll yell, but that's okay. Um, Keyboard Maestro. So what I did was I dropped that into my little setup scripts here. Uh, nope. Where is it? Somewhere down here. So when it's doing all the, this is this is the script that goes through the macro that goes through and does all the windows resizing for me and closes some apps that I don't need and all that jazz. But then in here uh, for Sublime Text, I just dropped that. I created an execute shell script and I just dropped that uh, said command in here with the full path to the file. And so that actually lets me when I'm, uh, so if I'm here and I've got it running at font size 14, there we go. So I'm going to run just this part of the macro and you'll see what happens. Keeping the fingers crossed. So there's this, there's this. See where we can see it. And if we run this with try, zip, there you go. So slowly but surely what I'm doing is building up this macro to deal with as many things as possible for me for getting set up for the stream. Because automation is awesome. So what I want to do now, so I've got this, and where that comes into play is I've got this checklist of the stuff that I do to get prepped for a stream. So this is everything that I go through. Um, the next one that I want to look at is, or so one of the ones that I do, or is it? Uh, so empty the trash and clean out these folders. So I just want to make sure that like, basically there's no work stuff hanging around in these folders. Um, there very rarely is, cause I like now do the stream stuff enough that I, all my work stuff is sectioned off, but it's like just as a check to make sure. Um, so to get these done, what I want to do is go back into Keyboard Maestro and just open the Finder four times and open those windows specifically. Um, and then just pop them up because that way I can just put eyes on them because like I need to go through and put eyes on all those things. But like I could go do that and, you know, it's not that hard for me to do because I go to Finder, I click on this, I click on this, I click on this. And I go look at the trash and I empty the trash. Not horrible, but let's make the machine do it. Um, so move and resize window. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so let's try. And with the, uh, so I, I'm, in, I'm increasingly impressed. It took me some time to get used to keyboard maestro, but I'm really kind of liking it. Cause one of the things we can do, it still freaks me out that there's not like version control that I know of. Maybe there is. Um, what does this modified button do? No idea. Um, and you don't really like save them. I guess I could, whoa, what's going on? That was weird. I should export these. So I should do revert macros. Oh. At editor to launch. 20. Uh, yeah, so it's got version control. I'm not surprised. Um, export as trigger file. I don't know what that is, but it sounds like you could probably trigger some stuff. Anyways, I'm increasingly impressed with it. Um, and it's the programmer part of me has to get used to more of this type of interface. Um, which has taken taken some time, um, but now that I'm kind of used to it, I'm more used to it. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is I want to. Oops, come here. Window, resize prompt, new Safari, move window, login window, bring application windows to the front, bring a window to the front. So what's under here for finder? Show an app, open a finder selection. What is that? Uh, 
Open. Oh, so if you've got something chosen in the finder, that's how you do it. Oh, so you could actually set this to like hotkey to fire into. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you could set up a hotkey so that if you're on, like if you're whatever, opening HTML pages and normally you open them in Safari, you could set up a hotkey so while they're selected to throw them to Chrome or Firefox. Instead of having to like right click and go. That's cool. Noted. Hide up for each and finder, apply modifiers, activate a specific app. So I think we're going to want to just make an app. And we're going to activate the finder. So try that. Yeah, so I don't have any finder windows open, but that's fine. The, the finder is now activated. You can't see that up there on the left, but it's the, it's the active thing. So now... Resize, prompt, move window, manipulate a window. Wait, activate window switcher, alert, bring a window to the front. Bring application windows to the front, log, manipulate. These are for browsers, I don't want that. Let's bring a window to the front. Can we, uh... Bring to front, front window front application. Doesn't sound like it's making a new window for us though. Let's throw that to finder and see what happens. Let's try this. Didn't do nothing. Uh, actually undo, does that undo work there? Yeah, okay, so what if we do select and go, do both of these. Okay, so it throws it to the finder but it doesn't actually do anything. Bring front window to front. Bring application windows to front. I'm looking for something that gives me a new window. Nope. Resize, prompt, new Safari. I don't want any of those. Move, move, manipulate, login window. I don't want a login window. Uh, browser. These are all, all the icons are all for browser stuff. We don't want that. Uh, finder. Activate an app. Activate the finder. Reopen initial windows. Oh, maybe that was it. Oh, you know what I could do? I think what probably what this would be better to do is... Because this doesn't have... This doesn't have a capability of firing off and saying, hey, show me these windows. But what you could just do is this, I think. So we're going to get rid of that. We're gonna run an Apple script. Um, actually, we're gonna do a shell script because that makes more sense to me. So our desktop is just, well, so home directory, pwc copies is a copy command that I made. So if I just do open this, open, Desktop, let's see what this does. There we go. So there are windows. Uh, and so probably a better way to do this would be open it and then move and resize it, which is the pattern that we'll repeat over. And this again is where like my programmer brain starts going, ah, we should have a loop and like do this other stuff. But like, that's not really what this is about yet. Um, ooh, actually look at this. Oh, uh, that's exactly what we need. Whoa, screen visible. That's cool. 
So because this is open, it should... Actually, I'm curious. I don't know. So if we run this, is it going to move the finder window? Nope, it moves the keyboard maestro because that was still the front window while that thing was opening, um, which I thought might happen. But we can tell it to go here. And now, finder window went up there. So that's cool. And then we rinse repeat for the other windows. Is there like grouping of this? Why did the music stop? New editor window, run macro. That's all the file stuff. Copy, delete, insert, action. Whoa. Lots of actions. Lots of actions. Uh, insert function. Oh, wait. Functions. No. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know about the functions. I mean, I guess I knew about one of them because there's the like the seek the screen here. We just saw one of those screen visible screen count. Oh, it's so yeah. Look at this. Okay, screen pixel color. Interesting. Menu bar, mouse button value, mouse coordinates. If I'm not mistaken, one person made this, and I, apologies if I am mistaken and a team made it, but like, look at all this stuff. Tokens. Super cool. Yeah, so I was thinking there's some other stuff you can do, and like, so. Nothing I say is gonna be new to people who use Keyboard Maestro or whatever, but like, I was thinking it's kind of neat because it can look at the clipboard. You could do stuff like if you copy something onto the clipboard. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So you could actually, well, so you'd have to put it in Keyboard Maestro in order to, to look at it. But like, you could basically say, like, if you copy something on the clipboard, do something in general. So like, if, I, if you select a piece of text and it has the quick brown fox in it, then you could sound an alarm saying, hey, the fox is out or something. I don't know. Um, And then like you can trigger stuff with files. I don't know. It's just, it's really, it's kind of got my head moving a little bit. Um, what am I doing? Oh, I'm looking for groups. So edit variables, right? Automatic completions, fine. That's all the general stuff. View. Reveal parent group. Yeah, so select group column. What does that do? Oh, it's probably this one. Yeah, okay. Oops, totally lost it. Oh, you could call another macro. Okay. You can do like composition of these things. And where I'm headed with that is, for example, I've got these things at the bottom, which is my close apps. Activate macro group, activate macro group for one action. Activate, deactivate, deactivate, execute, execute a macro. Yeah, so these are your groups. Here are the macros in the groups. And then you would just assemble off of that. That's really interesting. So AWS 
Django commands. Because it shouldn't matter where they are, I'm guessing. Or maybe it does, I don't know. Um, enable macro view group. Um, oh, available in all apps, available in all windows, always activated. Look at that. <laughs> it, it's It feels like Photoshop, where when you first look at it, it doesn't look like it does that much. And then you start playing with it, and it's like infinitely deep. So I can actually rename these. Oop, come here. Because so I've got a, I've got Django set up now. This is all very soon. This will be less complicated, but so. On this commands one, these links fire off Apple scripts that then fire off Keyboard Maestro scripts, 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 scripts. I got weird. Uh, and so actually one thing I want to do, set up Django to fire Keyboard Maestro via URL call instead of Apple script. So right now my Django commands trigger Apple scripts, which then trigger keyboard maestro commands. But I found the way to actually just send a call directly to keyboard maestro and have it go from there. So I can eliminate a, a step. Um, so that'll be something we do in the future. Keyboard maestro. Uh, I don't know if this still work right now, but I'm not worried about that. So where's my, is this the one we're working on? Yeah. So really what you want is a setup script and then a resize script. I'm gonna leave this, no, I'm not gonna put this in Django right now. Like this'll be, I don't know where I'm gonna put it right now. So right now I'm just gonna put it here. No, right now I'm gonna put it here. Yeah, so it makes more sense to just kind of do composure stuff. So instead of having all those things, you can basically do um, op -cha stream prep, Open Finder Windows. I wonder if I can cut. Does cut work? Ooh, looks like cut works. I will say, basically everything that I've said, I wonder if this works with this app, has worked, which is really nice. Stream prep, there we go, that's what it was called. Now uh, hopefully I didn't jinx it. Nope, there it goes. So, open that, move it there. Two, three, four. So this will be desktop. which will go that way. This will be downloads. It's weird, I wanna hit enter, but then I, like, it feels weird to not, to just click out of something. Like that was another thing that kind of messed with me a little bit is like, it's now saved or it's now whatever. bottom and then 
Mac, path to trash. Oh, uh. So, let's see if this works. Open dot trash. That was it. Cool. So that's this one. And last but not least, goes to that away. Uh, yeah, it also feels like I should be able to click somewhere and have it that not be blue. Can I do that? Yeah, there we go. Um, nice. So if we run, hopefully it goes. There we go. Uh, I want to throw something in the trash for a second just to make sure that really goes and kind of hit empty there. Oh, I can't hit empty. It's kind of a bummer. Yo, Vector. How goes it? Did you figure out your bug last night? Or are you still murdering it? Oh, I can do empty. Okay. So it just had to be in there. So empty. Yes. I've never emptied the trash from there before. I hope I didn't just break everything. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, I'd never looked at Go before, so that the stuff that you were doing there is just a little bit like R. Um the, like I, some of it, I was like, okay, that I understand, but like all the syntax and all this stuff moving around, don't get it yet. Ugh. Yuck. And double yuck. Cr crossing into different domains and borders or whatever that stuff with going into from script to mongo or wherever is always we've the number of times i've run into database stuff like that is high um the other one gets me a bunch is like uh i've had to work with excel docs that get exported to csv but excel decides to like swap the date time format on you without any possibility of fixing it and it's just like murderous um interesting. I don't even know what vsan is I saw you doing that last night but I was uh oh binary encoding of JSON like objects okay oh okay so you just dropped it if it was null or you just disappeared it if it was null so what'd you do then if it when you read it, read it back, did you look for the absence of it and then repopulate it as null? Or how did you, or was it just automatically null because it wasn't there? All right, so here's our, yeah, so what I really need is a stream prep. Oh, okay, cool. Just adds nil. Nice. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the things too about languages like is like what? Okay, what happens if I send nothing to it? What does it do? I still kind of remember getting my head around the idea of null versus none. And it's like, or null versus empty string or whatever. And it's like nothing is something. It's one of those little kind of rattles you a little bit until you get your head around it. Uh, okay, so stream prep. Two option. If it's a pointer, the empty value is nil. Okay. I have never used pointers before. Um, that's also beyond my ken. I mainly used, well, I basically only use scripting languages. I did a very little bit of like an intro book of Objective C. And I think that was it. If it's not a pointer, then it's the empty value of the structure. Oh, okay. I think that makes sense. 
I think I've got that. Maybe. Um, so let's do this. Stream plot. Stream. Stream. I can't speak this evening. Prep. Close apps. So the empty value of an integer is zero, for example. Oh, okay, right, yeah, yeah, okay, I got you. So it's, you can't have an int that's nil, so it gets zero, right? Is that where you're headed? Oh. If it's a pointer to an integer, then the empty value is nil. Okay, I stand corrected. Hmm. So then it's on you to recognize as you're processing it that you that an integer could be nil, I guess. I mean, you'd have to. Like if you're calling that back and you get nothing instead of you know zero, then you'd have to figure out how to deal with it, right? Oh, if you're using this pointer, okay. And yeah, again, I totally don't get pointers. Um, I just, I haven't done them. I, I've got no idea. So it's, when I start playing with Go, I will learn them. <laughs> uh, but I have not gotten to that point yet. Um, uh, okay, so what are we gonna do? So we've got, so we've got this that works. Run this. Do, 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 do. Sweet. So that lets me check everything really quick. Okay, yeah, and I'm, it's still like, I've never even used the C++ stuff before. I, I took like two weeks of a C++, no, it was a C? No, I think it was C++ class back in college, but I dropped it after like, well, I just stopped going after two weeks because I was not good at college. Um, had a good time, just wasn't good at the school part of it. Yeah, so let's try to do this. So let's grab all the close app stuff because then we can just put that in one place. That was weird, it just jumped all over the place. So that goes, so that moves Spotify. This moves contacts. This moves App Store. So these are all the moves. Here's all the things we quit. What is this? So that's move and resize window with name cranes. Twitch chat. Twitch chat. I have not been drinking. All right, so we're gonna cut all those, and we're gonna move those into stream prep close apps because that way. Oh, so like behind the scenes they are. Um, <laughs> you, you're breaking my brain, man. Don't break my brain. Um, I don't. So yeah, I still remember like in, I did Perl. That's where I started. And there were things that you could pass by reference and pass by value. Is that pointer related? Because um, you would. It depends on the way that you would call the object, whether or not you were manipulating the thing or you're manipulating another thing over here and only have the reference to the other thing or something. I don't know. It's been a long time since I did that. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, that's been a while. Um, and I still, so in Python, I'm still, 
I would call myself relatively new to Python. I'm still unsure sometimes of when I'm, when I'm moving stuff around where it's like what's actually going to happen to it where or whatever. It seems it seems more straightforward than Perl was because it seems more consistent. Um, and it it does what I'm expecting it to do. Uh, as Pathfy reference, I think that's right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I I feel like that's right with Python. Whichever it is, it seems like it's always that way as compared with Perl that you could do it different ways. Um, and I, yeah, it's been so long, I don't remember. Um, I just remember that it was definitely trippy somehow when I first started getting my head around that. Um, there's a closed dupes tab. Get window coordinates. Okay, so here's, so close all the apps. So I'm gonna get this one out of there too. So the windows resizers are just gonna be windows resizers. That way I don't have to, cause this was all duplicate code, which I wasn't a big fan of, but now I recognize that you can pull these things as modules and drop them in. Um, so we can get rid of all these. I think this gets done. This seems wrong. Cause I thought Firefox move and resize window. Oh, that's for chat. Okay, never mind. That's right. Got it. So those are all well, moving chat. So those are set up. Yeah, because I don't actually have to call. Yeah, really what I want is resizers to do all the resizing, but not necessarily close the apps. But when I first did this, I moved that all together and then duplicated it. So really what I want. Oh, so I can actually just put up a button. I can put a single button up there that's basically prep for go. Uh, C++ the default by reference. And you have the option of passing by value that you have to specify. Okay, gotcha. And I feel like... What I feel like Perl might have been backwards to that. When a variable is passed by reference function operation, the result... Data in the function passed by reference allows. So that's an array, one to 10, print by calling the array, print sample. So you pass sample to it. Yeah, this is, this is, I think that weird syntax for pass by reference. Yes, I have seen that site. I love it. Um, I bounced, so let's actually see Apple scripts notes. Uh, see if I can find, oh, I don't think I've moved my Apple script notes back in here yet. There's some 2017 stuff. Uh, I've got notes that are older than that. Um, but oh yeah, here you go. Mac OS X automation, isn't that it? Yeah, uh, this this is great. It, like if you're doing any Apple Script stuff, it's it's really solid. Um, I keep going back and forth on Apple Script. Like I just not as big a fan of it, but like with the keyboard key, keyboard maestro. Wow, I can't talk. Um, dropping in like having it do a bunch of the heavy lifting and then just little bits of apple script or javascript for automation the the javascript versions is i'm more interested in doing more kind of automation -y stuff um and it's it's also interesting because my brain's kicking back in that gear now um which i really like but thank you for the thank you for the link i i have seen this but i appreciate you uh you sending it over um because it is good stuff. It's funny because I keep doing this and it's like, I wonder if there's, so if, if there's like, I wonder if they got a keyboard maestro section. 
Hang on, gotta get to where I can see it. Whoa, I don't know this one. Oh, scripting boot camp. Wow, is that live? Is this an actual thing still going on? October 15th through 17th. Which year are we talking about? From 2017, looks like. Omnifocus. Config animation. Right. Yeah. So it's... I've done a okay amount of automation stuff in the past. Um... And like Automator, like Automator, I keep wanting to like Automator, but it keeps not working for me. Like, I don't know where it saves stuff. It saves stuff weird. But now that I've gotten into Keyboard Maestro, it's just like, okay, this this is making it work for me. Um, automate the setup and management of iOS devices. Ugh, yuck. Uh, I'm going to get into voice control at some point, I'm sure, even though it freaks me out. Swift app scriptable, okay. Yeah, automator, automation, photo stuff, interesting, yeah. Um, so actually what I should do, one second. Um, Oh wow, I don't have any other Apple script stuff. That seems impossible. Huh. That surprises me greatly. I figured I would have more stuff in the archive. But I don't. I, yeah, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they set up just a ton of little scripts. And that's a thing that I'm getting back into working on. So some of the same stuff too, right? So like doing all my window resize. So like you've seen it before, right? It's like, like I can go boop and like everything flies all over the place. Like it doesn't take me that long to do this manually, but it takes me a little time to do that manually. And so just having it go is just like you're done. I think I hit the wrong button. So I got to bring it back. There we go. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm a big fan of that, right? So uh, there's that whole thing about like, you know, the number of times you do it and have to, if you get your um, return on investment for the amount of time you spend into it for automation. But for me, not like there's more than just the the pure hours of a thing it's how how much hassle a thing is how much um inconvenient it is and how much it breaks your concentration having to do it like those all have a huge impact as well and then also just getting practice doing stuff right so if you practice a thing you get better at it and this is thinking and coding and all the other stuff so like i really um some people are kind of like oh i too much or whatever, but like I'm all about like automate all the things. Uh, sometimes to a fault, but like I'd rather go too far. In fact, like one of the things I was looking for, yeah. So that I mean that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Like right, I want to see these folders. Like so, my checklist to start up a stream is like see these folders, and just make sure there's no work stuff in them that's showing up because I'm probably gonna hit those folders at some time during stream. So now I've got this little keyboard maestro thing that's basically like uh, where is it? And, if we get, and so we'll get this all prepped soon, but it's like, show me those folders. There you go. Um, if I wanted to get really crafty, I could actually, you know, start doing stuff looking for them. Like, you know, these files are okay, but if you see different files, then open or you know, whatever. You could get, you could carry it to a crazy degree. I don't think I need to go quite that far with this one. Um, but yeah, so I've got open windows, I got close my apps. So this is just the stream prep stuff. And then I get to and then I can actually pull in from each one of these windows. 
so what I should do, so what's what all do I need to have done? So that gives me that. That's close all my tabs, which I've got. Yeah, that's all the Spotify stuff set up for stream. Oh, I want to hang on to that because that's that weird loop thing that I built. But see, yeah, see, I don't need to do that anymore. I don't need to do that. So, yeah, um, right, <laughs> yeah, We're, well, and so it, it's crazy for me to think about building things with scripts other than it's all just ones and zeros down at the bottom, right? So as, as long as you can tell the system which ones and zeros to put where like one it surprises me but it doesn't surprise me i guess if that makes sense like it, it's always it's always kind of fascinating that you, that you can do it and that you would do it but like as long as the as long as the apis are back in there right it, it makes sense like it's just another language talking to another thing um but it's still kind of like apple script really um and then like the ui stuff right it's all just it is Kind of crazy, but awesome. Um, yeah, exactly. How much you can do with simple tools, no doubt. Um, yeah, I really like this. The idea, not my idea, but just the idea of like the Lego blocks things like so you can take all these things and assemble them. And it's, it's I mean, Linux, right? It's the perfect example of that where you just take all these little command line things chain them together and you can do some really powerful stuff um that you wouldn't expect so like i don't know if you were on earlier but like even just using some of the command line stuff in general like i was trying to uh i was updating the so sublime text has a preferences file that's just plain text that you can edit so this is what it looks like and so i was just running a sed command to grab this and change it to 14 or whatever um or to 22 going up so it's just like yeah so like the the full yeah so actually i'll show you uh so i've been moving things i don't know where things are anymore so it should be here yeah so right here so this little said command which takes you know it looks like gobbledygook when you first look at it but it started out this short and i kept adding and adding and adding and adding and then like most of it's just the path at the end um but like that does it that that saves me from having to go into the preferences file change the find the target and find the font size copy or like delete it and then put the new font size save it and close the file like that one line right there does that whoops wherever that line was where's that line oh there it is down there Right. Yeah. The the getting and that's that's something that I I wonder if I wonder if that's kind of going to come back. Like I wonder if that's one of those cyclical things where because like I feel like so sometimes like when I'm sitting there and on stream and I'm like whatever making a new HTML file and I'm like I go like whatever. Whoops, that's wrong. Uh. So here's an HTML file, right? Doc type, HTML, HTML, body, body, HTML, right? We can open this. That's an HTML file, but like that doesn't take particularly long time. And then, but then like you can also have like all these frameworks and all this other stuff. And I feel like the impression I get from lots of the development world is like there's all this heavy stuff that's out there that you got to do all this stuff with in order to do anything and sometimes from the outside it looks like that's a lot of work to do a very small thing like i'm sure like i don't i've, I've got no idea what they're actually doing but there's there's times when it definitely seems like if you could back off of it from a thing and then same thing too but like also 
whatever i get it because like frameworks right you want to have like user authentication taken care of and like all the other stuff but i don't know it just feels feels like we're ripe for return to some amount of simplicity um but you know so i'm i'm, I'm with you on that it's a lost art um or it's at least not as promoted in art Yeah, uh, WSL, which one's WSL? Not the World Surf League. Windows subsystems for Linux, okay, gotcha. Yeah, cause didn't, what else did they, is that what they just put on there now? Did this just happen? Because I remember somebody was telling me about some stuff that they just did, and it blew me away. And I, I think this is it. Or is there something newer than this? It's been like two years? Okay. And I, I've been out of it, so that, that may be it. I, for some reason, I heard s somebody telling me something that was new, but I think it was this. So it's probably just that I hadn't heard about it in a couple of years. Um But yeah, that's really interesting. Super interesting. Right. Yeah, so figuring out like, hey, this is what we can do with a shell, basically, like a really good shell, um, which I, I think PowerShell was actually pretty good, right? Like it was a, a good jump forward. Um, but again, I don't have enough Windows experience. I've got a Windows machine now, so um, and I'm actually going to try and do some automation on it because it's where I do well. Whenever I do video editing, that's where I do editing. That's where I'm storing stuff, and so I want to get some automation that throws stuff up to um, Amazon for backup. So I'll be doing a little bit of stuff on there to play with. Uh, stand by. Where are we going? Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? <laughs> really? <laughs> An automation front end in JavaScript. Huh. That kind of breaks my brain. I was not expecting to hear that. Use PowerShell, it's nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mind PowerShell at all. I still, the one thing that I'm never going to get used to though is the reversed slashes or the the opposite slashes, especially because those are escape characters for me. Like that's just never gonna sit right in my head. Uh, where are we going? Sorry, got keyboard maestro. So we got these and now we've got that set out or split out. There's our resize windows for the Django tutorial. Okay, yeah, so I like this. So there's our close apps and open finder windows. So let's make one more here. That's just called stream prep. Run. Oops, that didn't work. How do we add, where is that execute a macro? Execute a macro. Execute a macro. Macros. Close apps. This is super cool. Execute a macro. Macros. Open finder windows. All right, so we're gonna do one last thing here. PowerShell's cross-platform? Is it on Windows or on Macs too? I, I tell you, I'm surprised at how much, I didn't realize how nice it was to do that automation, to have it do its thing. 
until I'm doing it. And one of the reasons I'm spending even more time on it is like, it's just, again, it's, I'm spending a fair amount of time on automation, but one, I figure I'm going to stream for a long time. Um, but two, the like qual that quality of life thing where it's just like, I don't have to sit there and do all that crap. Like I, so I, I pulled back, um, like I'm just, all I'm doing is going through this checklist and saying, okay, what can I do to automate all these things? Um, and so one of the things I'm going to maybe do tonight, but I'm not sure is actually, so like I tried to look at NV all, which is my little note taker. I can't figure out how to get to its preferences to update it in the same way that I'm doing Sublime Tech. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna look at BB Edit, I'm gonna look at PyCharm, I'm gonna look at everything and say like, okay, what can I actually edit? Cause I used to have, and I think I actually put them down here. Yeah, handle by automation. So, um, yeah, so throwing my contacts over there and throwing my app store over there into the other monitor. Cause I don't want those accidentally popping up basically. Um, and then set, setting sublime text fonts, like those are now handled by automation as is all the window resizing. So increasingly I'm going to be like, just kind of looking through here and it's like, okay, what can I knock out of this to make it go better? Blacksmith house stick knife, as in the blacksmith doesn't have the an actual like good knife because it spend all your time doing the work stuff. Am I reading that right? Oh, sorry. The next, I'm gonna go ahead and read the next line of your chat. Yeah, and that's that's a great saying. Um, I like it. That's a great saying. Uh. I think the one uh, thing that I kind of have s slightly different is I don't do a bunch of code stuff at work. S so I'm a little more energized to do this stuff not at work, like once work's over and once I'm streaming. Um, but the, And also when I'm doing the streaming, I get a little hyped up or whatever. But like if I was doing dev stuff all day, I don't know... And I'm not saying I wouldn't, I'm not saying I would. I'm saying I, I, I don't know where I would be in terms of like doing this kind of stuff. But having gotten into it a little bit, I would I would probably at least try and do that stuff for the job, right? Um, and that's that's some, when I was doing more of it, that's what I would try and do is, is automation stuff. Cause it's like, I like making, I like making the little things that work that aren't giant projects. So you can actually see a thing happen and then putting it in place and having it go. Um, the trick of course is when somebody calls you about something you built three years ago and you're just like mm. and like it's been running but it just stopped <laughs> you're like that was three years ago <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it's working for you but uh, I'm going to need to take a look at that because I don't remember it at all we had we had a couple things like that that I just I was helping some people out uh, a few years like several years back um and I had no idea this process was still running and then got a call, I don't know, sometime last year. And they're like, hey, it seems to have stopped working. We just moved a whole bunch of servers and we think we broke it. And I'm like, I legit had no idea it was still going. Uh, yeah, PowerShell on Mac OS. Look at that. I'm not going to do this. There's no way. Eh, not no way. Maybe I will. What does it get you? Learning PowerShell, PowerShell 101. Let's say something divas. Oh, dives, deep dives. Getting started, help system. One-liners in the pipeline. Ooh, okay, that is not pretty for me. Can pause and continue equals true. I'm still on Mac, right? That looked like not Mac stuff. Yeah, install.net is global. Like, doesn't sound like something I want to do, really. Like, it's 
But don't get me wrong, it's cool and it's interesting that they're doing this. It's super interesting that they're doing this. Uh, but like, I'm so far... Oh, install using homebrew. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, brew and... Brew oh, so if you can do it with PowerShell, maybe I'll give it a shot. I'm sorry, if you can do it with brew, maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't know, that's just... That's throwing a weird... That feels weird to put that on my machine. Like, I don't know like where it's going to hook into stuff, basically. Yeah, undocumented processes. That would have been me. Um, I, I I try very hard not to do that. And this is one of those things that it's just like, actually, that's not true. There was documentation. There was a readme file. It was literally three files. It was a, a, a JavaScript for Photoshop, a config file, and then a readme file. So there was actual documentation in there. Um, but like it. I don't know. But hey, yeah, so I documented it. I like I, I don't feel bad about it, but like nobody knew like so the it was for our photo services department. They were just running this process and it was just doing all this stuff and it was fine. But like nobody like our, our photo services department knew about it, but none of our like IS guys or IT guys knew about it. But they didn't have to because it was just a Photoshop script. Turned out it was a very important Photoshop script. Um so when it choked, because they so they moved a server, um, and basically they needed to go in the config and point it to the new server, but they didn't have they didn't know how to do that, and they're not Photoshop folks, so they didn't know how to go in and look and see like where the script was being called, and then look at the file and see all the other stuff. So um, it was just it it went as it, like whatever it it was fine, Every, everything was cool. Um, it, but it was just funny for me that that thing was still going. Um, and still is, by the way, that once they once they reported it to the right server, it's still going, um, which is just incredible to me, too. Like this thing that was I mean, it's years old, still just piping right along. Yeah, forget. Yeah, I. So that's the other thing that I really try and do now, too, is get much better. Like I'm using significant names in variables as a practice now to make sure that it's like I mean even for for loops lots of times instead of doing like I or whatever I'm like you know window index or whatever so that it just like I'm trying to get even more about using stuff that's meaningful so even if you don't have so like if so if, if you're in the code and looking at the code you don't have to do less mental overhead and you have to not guess at what things are doing um, I'm not, I've still got a lot of practice to do on that, but that's where my head's at with stuff. Um, cause it's, it's been beneficial for me. So like there's current us and then there's future us. And then there's, well, so there's all the other developers in the future that look at us and that whole thing with like lots of times we're the future developer. So like there've been times when I've been the future developer and been very happy with past, what past me did and very angry at what past me did. Um, so I try, I try to make future me happy. And future developers, right? Uh, let's see what we got. Oh, yes, yeah, so I know what we want to do. So, so let's move this one. So here's... Now I'm going to do some more. But so here's the cool thing with this stuff, right? So this is not... I'm, I'm used to working on systems where uh, like I have to I have to get it right the first time. I don't have to get this right the first time. Um, so like, whatever, I'm just gonna move this into Django commands. First question is, does it still run these actions even though they're in a different folder? We'll see that if the windows pop up. The windows popped up, okay, cool, so that still works. So what do we want to call this? Yeah, so here, actually, here's an example. In Django, um, dev launchpad, select text. Launchpad, commands, views. So in Django, the 
command string or the function name is resize windows for stream full v2. Resize windows for stream with uh, full v2, right? So, and then that actually calls the Apple script resize windows for stream full v2, right? So I, I keep trying to make sure that I'm passing all this stuff through as much as possible. So, and it's funny because I was watching a tutorial today um, on Django. And like, uh, there's a few times when the person would do a thing like, like, hey, we can call this object um, equals whatever. And then down here we do object equals object. Like in a, in a hash or in a, what are these things are called in dictionary? Um, but I'm going to call it new thing or whatever. And so then you've got to, but then when this gets passed over to the different context, your name is different in two places. And so you've got to make that mental jump. And it's like, don't do that. Like name it, give it a meaningful name. Use that name in both places. Um, dictionary. I'm going to call stuff arrays and hashes forever because that's the first things I learned in Perl. Um, I, I'm slowly but surely getting used to lists and dictionaries, um, but it's I'm not there yet. Um, do I have that actually on gate repo? Yeah. Oh, you know what we should do? Oops, that was the wrong thing to do. That was that. That's weird. Google Drive. Why do I have Google Drive on here? Uh, so we're going to add repository. Yeah, I've moved everything. So everything's like none of my repos are in and like it's all just crazy. URLs, close duplicate tab, okay. Close duplicate tabs. Stop it, vector. Wait, what? In Python, classes are actually hacks on top of the dictionary. Oh, so like it's just a bunch of key value pairs all the way down kind of thing? With like, so a, you could have a key where the value would be a function and the key where the key would be a key for another value or key is a value or key is a list. I think I see how you could do that. Okay, right, I gotcha. So wait, so because I've heard classes are first class objects or whatever. Isn't that right in Python? So does that mean that like it's the underneath part where it's the the list and the dictionary thing happening? But like pick your level of abstraction, right? Um because when you're in Python, it's not sitting, it's not a hack on top of dicks, right? It's the lower level, I'm guessing. I don't know, but yeah, I can see how you, I can I can see how you would do that. Yeah, because you could you could make like for every for every key, you could actually have a dictionary, and that dictionary would include could include metadata, like this is an integer, this is a string, this is a whatever. And then one of the keys inside there could be like the actual value of whatever the thing is. And then you could structure it that way. And then one of the things could be, this is a function and then make a function in there. And then that would give you most of the stuff that you needed, I think. Yeah, interesting. That's super interesting. Okay, gotcha. Underneath their underneath their dictionaries, I gotcha. Cool. Um, I didn't know that. That's that's really neat. 
I, I still like the whole, I read a, a really good book. Um, code, the hidden language of computers, um, that starts from scratch on, this is binary. It's either one or zero. And then it goes to, now we're going to look at like, and so that's a bit, and then we're going to give you, now let's say we wanted to count and we could either go zero or one, right? And then it's like, what if we wanted to go to two? And then it adds another bit in and like, it actually walks you through and then it gets the logic gates and it gets to actually like building a computer. Um, and then the, the whole concept of like putting a language on top of that and all the actual ones and zeros of it is really just like that, that book really kind of blew my brain. Module objects have a secret read only attribute called dict, uh, which returns a dictionary used to implement the module's namespace. The name dict is an attribute, but not a, but not a global name. Obviously, using this violates the abstraction of namespace implementation and should be restricted. Things like postmortem debuggers. Okay. Yeah, so I think, because that's what you can call in like, that just that just dumps everything, right? I've used that before somewhere. And it may have been some debugging stuff or whatever. And I don't really I don't really remember, but I remember calling it and I remember just it just going if I'm thinking about the right thing. So uh What was I going to do? I was going to do something. So if you do... I can't type either. Can you call dict on a string? I should probably do this in another tab. No, okay. It has to be an object then or something. I, I'm fairly certain I've used this before. I know that I've used dir before too for, for dumping all the stuff that you can do with the thing. Um, I feel like I've done it with dick too. Uh, oh, I know what it's going to do. Uh, it's one text. So let's make, let's do a couple things. We're going to, we're going to edit here real quick. No. So what do I want to do? Um, yeah. So I want that link to be here. So I'm going to make a new command. And we're going to call this prep for stream. This is going to be a request. And we're just going to do this. But, oh, here's where we actually, here's where we're going to do something different. Um, Here, so let's put this in. So we need to get our URLs. Path. Prep for stream. Views. Prep for stream. Name. Prep for stream. So that's got it in our URLs. And it's hitting a view. So we got the view and we got the URL. So right now, if we hit this, this is just going to redirect, right? Not right now, it's not. Uh, uh, 
Uh, let's just do this, SVA to activate. There we go, go back into Launchpad. Python run server. Wah wah. Uh, not there. Uh, uh oh, what did I do? Path, prefer stream, views, prefer stream, name, prefer stream. Maybe I should read the error. Line 27. Uh, what file? URLs. URLs. Oh, there's no. Need a comma there. Got it. That makes sense. That port is already in use. What do you mean it's already in use? I have two windows open. Okay. Fair enough. So I want to put the so the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to put the link on there. Pages. Templates. Pages. Home page. Block content and block. Oh, okay, yeah, right. So href equals commands prep for stream. Prep for stream. So yeah, what I'm starting to do is is build up my is move my launch pad over to this version. Cause like this is my initial one with all this junk on it. Um and that will be taken over by this one. So prep for stream. Just gonna redirect to my hands. Okay, cool. So that's working. Got a tone test going. Um now we just need to make it do something. So where is oh, the windows open and the weather is so nice out there right now? Keyword Maestro URL. Trigger URL. Look at that. Got right to it. And value equals trigger value. I don't know what the and value is. Is either the URL encoded macro name or the macro UID. Is the option to pass trigger value as the macro. Do not include the square brackets in the actual URL. Do not include the purse value without a value. Okay. Does it have, does it show me UIDs? Cause that'd actually be cool. But I think you've got to turn on token macro name for UID. This token returns the name of the macro or macro group with a specified UID. It's not what I want. I want to get tokens executing macro. Macro executing macro UUID. How do I just see the macro's UUID? Uh, see all tokens. UUID. Executing. Does that say macro UUID? There we go. Macro UUID returns. The unique idea of the, for this Mac. You can test this with macro syncing to have your Mac behave differently on different Macs. Oh, interesting. Oh, it didn't say macro, it just said Mac UID. Macro name for UID. Random UID. Executings. Macro name for UID. But I. That's going up. Why is that going up? Huh. 
Safari document title. Look at that. Get selected macro UUID and name without the clipboard. This macro returns the UUID of the macro that is currently selected in the keyboard Meister editor. Does this via Apple script using keyboard Meister's automated calls. It's not use clipboard, as so many other macros do, including many of my own, at least until now. The included demo macro shows how to call this macro. This is a lot of hassle to get a UUID. I think I'm just going to call it by name. Again, like programmer part of me is like, got to have the UUID or whatever, but like, this will be fine. You can get the KM trigger for a macro by click for a macro by clicking on the or by URL pop up in the trigger selection. Oh, well, let's try that. So stream prep run, new trigger. Wait. Pop up in the trigger section of the macro. Oh, or by URL. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Okay. There's our UUID, so that should mean I can change the name. All right, so it ends in DBE. Swift, shell, Ruby, what's shell? Yeah, okay, so it goes a OSA script if it's gonna do. So it, it triggers off of Apple script. Python still calls OSA script, I'm guessing, yep. So here we go. We're going to put this in here. Ooh, or do I actually want to keep it? No, that's a that's abstraction. I don't want. I don't want to have to think through that. Um So the first thing we're going to do this. See, I need to think about naming conventions here. Because I was using snake case down here. But I do kind of like capital letters now. I didn't used to. Stream. And we're going to do dashes. Prep. Run. So I wish you could put like a subfolder in here. Can you do subfolders? No. Just call it stream prep. Yeah, this is cool because I can actually call the this in here too. Because I want to have the ability to resize the windows without doing all the other stream prep stuff. So this gives me that separation of concerns. Oh yeah, and keep that there. That's fine. So stream prep or by URL. So we're gonna do this macro stream prep. Guess I could leave that there. Doesn't matter. So what do you just do? Curl. Open. That was it. So that 
that was about farmer. What's going on? Open. Yeah, so now I gotta work on naming conventions. I'll do that in here in just a second. Because I'm not sure how I want to do these. It's ugly. Whoops. Oh, this is nice. Because they're smaller. We can just do this. I also like it because it's straight and just calling straight to it instead of having to fire off an Apple script. So fewer things to go wrong. Because I don't have to maintain these support commands for the Apple scripts. I can get rid of all that stuff. Prep for stream. Yeah, I like that. We're going to go with that. Yeah, part of me likes the idea of like using the UUIDs, which let's see if that changed. Did it change? DBE. No, it didn't. Okay, good. That's what I expect. But I like, but if I was looking at that again with the idea of having um, being able to get my head around it, I don't want to, like, I wouldn't easily be able to go through and look for a UUID. Like, I'd have to open up all the UUIDs for all of those things. Um, and that's not a good way to do that. So, even though it's kind of weird to call things this way for some reason, especially because there are spaces in there, and like, I don't know, it's just weird. Yeah, I like the capital letters versus like the function. Like these, these are fine for like functions, but these are like with the macros. I feel like I want them to be uh, capital letters. So we'll change those. So prep for stream. So we're gonna close all our apps. We're gonna open our Finder windows, and we're going to. Whoops. New action. Execute a macro. We're going to execute a macro. And I'm actually, ah, oh, bummer. Oh, can I just drop it? Oh, you can, oh, see, <laughs> good on you. Um, now here's a question. What happens if I change the name of that? How is it going to catch that? Actually, I'm just going to call it this. It's fine. It did catch that. Okay, so it's bouncing off the UUID and it's figuring out that the name changed and updating it. That's good. That's very good. My command's still not going to do that because it's looking, it's passing by name. So that's going to be different. So I got to change that. Um, I'll do that here in a minute. But first, we get this going. Okay, so closing all the apps, opening the Finder windows, resizing the stream. So I actually want to do the Finder windows last. So I think this is hot, isn't it? So that's hot. Prep for stream, right? Prep for stream. See what happens. There they go. Zip. And there's all the windows. Okay, that's pretty good. Close that. Looks good there, looks good there. That's really cool. And I can hotkey it as well. 
to bounce it down. That's awesome. That is very awesome. I'm happy with that. Yes, it's even less time now for me to have to, to deal with that. So is there anything else off the top of my head that I can do in there while I'm here? So resize all windows, we're doing that. Unlock password manager set. I'm not gonna worry about these right now. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about these right now. I've spent enough time on this. I can't do BB at it. S3, yeah. Chat. So that's these. Boom, 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 boom. Close apps. So I, I actually, I'm looking at doing this too, where I'm actually gonna loop through the apps that are allowed to be open and close any one that aren't. Um, that's all OBS stuff. Mic, make sure mic isn't muted. So stream info, open stream notes. Close all browser tabs. I don't really want to automate that because I'd close some stuff I didn't mean to. Make sure camera's set up properly. I could look at that too. I can just close all the Sublime Text windows. Because like if stuff's open. Yeah, I may do that later. I think this is in pretty good shape. Sweet. Where's GitHub? Add prep for stream to keyboard maestro. Got it. Sweet. Okay, so we did that. Uh, see if we can update pipearms from the command line. You know what? Let's see if we can do that. Two types of settings that define your preferred environment. Project settings and IDE settings. Project settings. If you specify template project settings, these settings will be automatically used for each new set. Okay. The settings that pertain to the object are uh -huh. Okay. IDE settings are stored in dedicated directories in PyCharm home directory. So let's go there. Application data, nope. Library. Application support, I'm guessing. Chip brains. Is that there? There it is. Product version. Pot charm, all that jazz. Consoles code, inspectors, options, plugins, sketches, tabs, templates, grip, font. Oops. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Grip. In real life, font, start, go. Options editor. Uh oh. Uh. Oh, look at that right there. Now here's the question. Does it update live? So here's PyCharm. Uh, here's a file. Fourteen. Oh, it doesn't. But if I close it and open again? If I quit and then open, please work. There it is. Ha! <laughs> so now I can do this too.
Okay, that's cool. So now I can actually update this too. We are gonna do that. Uh, script editor is not what I'm looking for. I don't know why that's open, but whatever, it's all cool. So keyboard maestro. So this is gonna be the same thing where Where am I gonna put this? So I'm M prep for stream. So So close all the apps, resize all the windows. Open finder windows. <clears throat> Open finder windows, close apps. Resize windows for stream full. So this, this is all the resize stuff. And then this is actually where I'm doing, where I'm setting the configurations too. Which let me make another one here. Um, Cause I wanna, I'm gonna do the update configs externally. Stream prep. Update configs. Oh, it's actually in here. Uh, Cause this, again, I, I can separate these concerns out so that when I'm running the, the resize of the windows, I'm not having to mess with going through and doing the, the font sizes. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a backup file. That's a good way to do that. Yeah, that's not bad. I like that. Yeah, I like that. And then we're going to test this on the command line. So we're going to bring up Sublime Text, bring up a new thing. And what we're looking for is font size value. So said. I'm not gonna do the eye stuff yet. I'm just gonna look for it. So, so substitute, there's what we're looking for. And what we wanna find, is, or what we wanna move to is 21, I guess. We don't need to be global about it, so that'll, that'll do it right there. And then the file path is gonna be, we're just gonna PWC to copy, whoops, uh, with editor which will give us our full file path. So this should just print out. There we go. Change 14 to 21. I'm digging said. I really am. So in here, we're going to go 0 through 9 plus. And that way it won't matter what's in there. We still got 21, but we're still going to, to output. So if we do, if we cat it, we'll still see 14. But if we add this in here, I dot dot or quote quote, now it won't get a standard out. It'll replace itself. And now if we cat it, 21. So I 
that becomes this. Stream tip prep update configs for stream. I mean, it's kind of redundant, but whatever. But the other thing we want to do though is we need to close PyCharm. Quit, maybe? Quit a specific application. Because it doesn't pick up the config change unless we restart the app. I mean, there may be a way to do that, but like this will work. Or this just worked. So PyCharm. Quit PyCharm with Anaconda plugin. Okay. Didn't know it had an account to plug in, but sure, cool. And then we relaunch it. Activate. Prodrum. I don't know, I couldn't see it there. Uh, leave it at front, cool. All right, so here's the test. Here we can close this. Whoa, yep, that's cool. You good? Oh, actually, we already updated it. So if I quit it and launch it again. Yeah, if I, if I launch it again, it should still have the 21 in it. Yep, there you go. So big font. And now, just to prove the point, because we need to see it change, we're going to drop it back to 14 with this. So it should be, this will be our test. Ready, test, go. So it's closing it. Cool. Uh-oh. Maybe it was thinking. I hit it twice, I'm not sure. If it was just slow thinking the first time. But there's a 14, okay. And so one more time, going back to 21. Closes it. Did not open it. But if you run it a second time, then it opens it. Huh, why is it doing that? And there's a bigger text. Okay, so that's that part's working. Why is it not open the first time? Quit. Let me launch, force quit. Oh, you could do this. Hang on. This will probably work. So if we change if we change it and then do a quit and relaunch. That feels a little bit dangerous, but Whatever. All right, so we're gonna go, so we're at 21, we're gonna go back to 14. And see what this does. So we're at 21, go. Okay, it's relaunching.
There's 14. Do, do, do. Um, just that one open. 14, 14. And then this will be what it really is. 21. So, okay, that's cool. I like that. Prep for stream. Resize windows for chat. Update configs. So that's this. Why does it keep doing that? I don't like that. So that can go there. Oh, maybe. <gasps> can I drag and drop them? Oh, that's weird. Okay, that surprises me. I found the first thing that's weird about uh, what's my thing here? I guess we can do all this first. Oh, that's activating that term. I got it. Never mind. Um, okay, so there's our font sizes for the apps that we know about. And I can take them out of here. No, oh, it's funny. You could actually have one... Nah, whatever. You could... Pass some stuff in here and do it. No, it, it, they're they're separate enough. I was gonna say you could actually like send the coordinates for the windows and have them all go there, but like there's actually different shapes to, for the windows and where they go depending on which uh, which one you're in. So this does all the font sizes. Update configs for stream. And then really what I want is stream done, reset, configs, post stream. So we're gonna grab all these, we're gonna put all these here. So this is for that, for JetBrains. This is for Sublime Text 3, so our font goes to, I think, 10? Because it's got that weird multiplier on it. Not weird, but it's got that multiplier on it. And then this goes to 14.0. All right, so let's see what's going on here. I think we're gonna get rid of this in a second. So there's Sublime Text 2. And three, and PyCharm's back here. So update configs for stream. So PyCharm should go away and come back with uh, level level twenty one uh, font size twenty one. And then it didn't it didn't update um, Sublime Text or Sublime Text is the same thing. It didn't uh, it didn't change it. So there's our that. It's like thinking down here, scanning and install packages. That was weird. Just put something up there a second ago. That must have been one of those. For some reason, it threw one of these. You can't see them. It put one of those file encoding things or something like way up top there. It like figured. I couldn't remember where it was. Okay, so there's that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this and see if we can get one that has more text on it that we can see. So there's that. 
There's that. So we can see, we should see those jump in just a second. Yeah, so there's all our fonts for Sublime Text, three up here, two down here, and PyCharm over here. And now we're gonna go, so that was prepping. Now we're gonna go done. So this is resizing them back down for me. I think I've got them all set. We'll see what happens. So there goes two and three. Nice. PyCharm's firing back up. And it's a, it's a font size that I can deal with. Um, that's super cool. That's really good. And so now, since we're calling prep for stream from here, all I have to do is add Oh, I just realized, does this have a font on it? doesn't oh well I can't make it bigger but we can do this stream prep update configs so now when I come here Resize windows full. Actually, what I want to do is resize windows chat because that's really where we're going to be. Resize, whoops. Oh, that's weird. Windows for stream with Stream prep. Really, these should be stream. <sighs> stream macros. Resize, resize, prep for stream. Prep for stream, resize windows full for chat. Stream done, stream. Would be a good name for these. Update, configs for stream. Whoops, don't do that, that's bad. Update configs post stream. Update configs pre stream. We're probably going to goof at those at some point. Pre stream is going to 21, right? Yeah, okay. And then run stream prep. Can you put underscores in front of those? Yeah, one at the end too, why not? Make it all pretty. And 
So we're going to close all the apps that shouldn't be there. We're going to resize everything up. Oh, we're going to do resize to chat. We're going to open our finder windows to look at and we're going to update pre-stream configs. Nope, that needs to go first. Dang, close the apps, it's fine. Resize windows. Oh, stream prep, open find windows. Let's bring that in. To review. Uh, open find when it's review. Okay, yeah, so stream put close apps. We're going to bring that into non stream apps. I'm liking this. Close non-stream apps. Update for our configs. Move everything to chat. Open the finder when it's a review. That's pretty good. And now here, yeah, see that's tiny for y'all probably, right? Um, we just need to change the name of the macro. I think I'm actually going to change it here too, right? Run stream prep. So it's slightly different, but it's directionally the same. There's that. And we're going to change this, this, and this. And what should happen now? Oh, wait, back up. Refresh. Try now. Oh, prep for stream. Why is it going to prep for stream? That's the wrong. Oh, because I hard coded it. Ha. It would have goofed anyways. Oh, I guess it would have thrown me a warning if I tried to call a different URL, maybe. If I had it like URL'd in there, however you do that. Well, it kind of worked. In that it didn't actually work on stream prep, right? I wonder if it doesn't like that run stream prep, redirect commands. So it redirected, right? Like it worked because it redirected. And I saw it go to the other page. Just didn't call it. Uh, maybe we take out the, uh, those. Oh, do you have to have it set to call by URL? Interesting. We'll see if this works first. I don't think I had the other one set though. It just jumped out of that window. Maybe you have to have it set like this. Do you have to have it set like that? To be executed, the macro must be enabled and active. Uh, trigger by the following when the macro is enabled. 
trigger over here. I'll bet you have to have it there. Three macros. Yep. Okay. Here, let's put this back in case it works. Run stream macro. Yeah, I mean, this is it. Oh, I took out macro when I was editing it here. Yeah, macro. I, I took out that whole thing. Okay, that's why. So I'm guessing you don't have to have this. Let's just see. All right. Take two. Ish. Maybe four. Whatever. Boom. Working. Yeah, the font size just changed. There it is. See, it takes it a lot. So like that, that operation to open takes a long time. I don't know why oxygen's opening. Yeah, so it clearly, PyCharm got the command to open, but like all of that other stuff happened after it. So like, and I'm assuming that's kind of how it has to happen. Uh, even though there might be a way to hook into there somehow, but like, that was a it fire it forked off that process to open it and then it just opened um that's sweet okay so i've got one command now that i can run i can do all that stuff and then we can probably bring that back there hello how are you um and then i can go switch it back to non-stream mode. I want to do that. I want to put that in there too. And then we'll move on. But that's really exciting. I like that. So oh, it's so big when you are not used to that. Um, run stream prep def run post stream. Macro. Run post. Run post stream. I guess we'll call it post stream macro. That can be fine. So sub process run. And we'll call this post stream macro, which is the name we'll use. Before we do that, we want to put this in here. Come here, here, post stream macro, macro, macro. And then grab this, 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 this. Ah, all right, Vector. Cool, man. Uh, I don't know how long we're gonna go tonight, but uh, I'll swing by. Yeah, nice. Uh, I'm a big fan of the programming, so do it. And good on you for doing it in the major in the college. Like it's a, uh, it's a good, good thing. Are you, uh, you got a particular language you're working with? All right, post stream macro. Let's get post stream macro set up. So I'm kind of doing this a little bit out of order, but that's okay. So we're gonna make a new macro. Call it post stream macro. Uh, and then right now, the only thing we're going to do on it is execute a macro that is going to be named update configs post stream. Wait, can you just drag those over there? Oh, look at that. 
Super impressed. So that's post stream macro. Uh, no, just uh, I'm setting up automation for kicking off my streams to make stuff easier for me to get set up. Um, and then in a little bit, I'm going to mess around with some uh, some of the YouTube iframe API um, to see if I can get two videos kind of doing music stuff back and forth. Um, so that's I'm just about finished with with these updates and then I'll uh, then I'll punch through that. Uh, just starting to see because it's the base of everything and I learned HTML. OK, yeah, so you got like whew, big old part of the spectrum. Hey, look. HTML makes computers do things like I don't who cares what it's called. Uh, if you make web pages, you're doing something on a computer. So like who cares? Um, you're like it doesn't have if then statements. So so what? Um, though it used to like way back. Um, some header stuff that you could do kind of looking at it if you were using uh, different versions of browsers and stuff. Thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, okay, so this is the update config. So let me get that fired up real quick. Um, oh, the font is giant again. I'll get used to it and get, get in a second. So here's um, our run stream prep. And now we're going to call the command for Post stream macro. These are not good names. I'll do better names later. Wait, is it just called post stream macro? Oh, yeah, okay. Run post stream macro. Yeah, doing some Python. Um, this is Django, uh, which is the Python web framework that is the one that I'm using. Uh, I played around with it a long time ago, and I'm now just kind of getting back into it. Um, what I'm doing a little bit, just to fill you in. So I've got this local web page that I run um, just on my machine. It doesn't go anywhere else. That just has a bunch of little links for me, and there's actually some things like it'll update my uh, Amazon credentials for the MFA stuff back and forth. So there's a couple little things behind there, but it's all just PHP pages. There's no framework and it's just raw PHP. Um, I've been doing a bunch of Python. So I've decided that what I want to do is rebuild this site and really enhance it um, in Python in Django. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, and one of the first things I'm doing is I'm building these commands, uh, these commands. Uh, I broke something. Uh, yep, I broke something. Where did I break it? Post stream macro must be over here. Here? Uh, what did I do? There's. Let's go read the error message. What do you say? Run post stream def request. Oh, there must not be a semicolon back there. Or a colon? Aha, found it. See if that works better. Whoop, sub process ex unex expected and blocked. Wow, I just messed this one all the way up, didn't I? Can views has no after post stream macro. What did I call it? Oh, there we go. Hey, we got it. Oh yeah, I played around with Flask a little bit too. Um, Again, a couple years ago, so I don't I don't have any of that stuff in my head anymore. I, I'll be honest, I completely forgotten about Flask until uh, I was like watching a tutorial uh, and the guy was talking about it. And the templates that Flask uses are a little bit different than Django's, um, but apparently there's a way you can use the Flask templates in Django. Um, but I was like, oh yeah, Flask. It was it, like I, it's it's really like short and sweet for stuff, right? Like it's a a smaller set of things to work with, but if you only need those things, you get there faster. Is that a good way to describe Flask? It's kind of how I remember it, but it's been a while. Uh, all right, let's see if this is live again. You alive? Hey, you're alive. Okay, so run stream prep work. So now what we should see is these fonts. Yeah. And like, so one of the, one of the reasons I like Django and one of the reasons I was super interested in it, um, 
is user authentication. Like I'd been messing around with Ruby on Rails for a little bit, but one of the things that always freaked me out about it was user auth wasn't built into the framework. You had to go get an external package. And that just always, and there was like, at the time, this was a few years back, there was just these two that were kind of competing. And it's like, I don't want to have to make the decision about the right user package to use for authentication and authorization. I want, I want that decision to be done and me not have to worry about it. Um, and so that was one of the first things that got me looking at Django. Um, but yeah, cause it, it does all kinds of magic and like, I'm cool with that. I I'm a big fan of magic. So, um, all right, so here we go. So we're going to check this. So what should happen when I click this link, we're going to bring PyCharm up here too. We're going to hide chat for a second is The font sizes of all these things should change. If I did this right, let's see if we wired it up. Yep, there goes Sublime Text, there goes the other Sublime Text. PyCharm should be doing it right now. Survey says. Sweet. Hey, fonts that I can read without blowing out my eyes. Nice. Okay, cool. So that's working. Uh, and so now what we can do is just bring it right back and we'll actually run the full prep just because that's the only thing I've got wired up right now. So this will bit dance all over the place. Uh-oh. I saw an error. Looks like it's working though. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Cool, it worked. I don't know why this, what happened here? Preans run stream prep. Didn't return a response object. Turned none and said, oh, okay. I'm not sending anything back. Gotcha. Let's send it back. And why don't we go back to the homepage since that's really where we're going. Cool. Okay, so that's got my. That's more improvement for the process of getting set up for the stream. Like that, that takes a whole bunch of things off the checklist. I just hit a link and it does a whole bunch of magic for me, and I don't have to worry about it. I can go mess with other things. Um, the one that may take a little bit of work in a little bit is PyCharm is ended up down here instead of up there where it's supposed to be. Um, because it took so long to load. So like I, I, I shut it. So the way that that works is uh, in order to change the font size, you have to update the config file. That's an XML file, close the application and then reopen the application. But that reopen takes so long that it took longer than the to go than the resize command was in or the move command. Um, so I'll, I'll play that a little bit. That's if that's the worst thing that's happening, that's not a problem. Um, I could probably sit there and set up something. I don't know how you do that because I don't know like what signal comes back from the app that says, hey, I'm done loading. Um, there may or may not be anything that Keyboard Maestro can hit with that. Um, if I solve that, I solve that. If I don't, I'm not super worried about it. Like all the rest of that effort is is a, a big change and a big fix, um, especially doing that font size stuff. And I'll, I'll look over time. Um, to see if there's more things I can do with the font size. So I've got BB Edit open. I've got Text Triangular open. Um, I've got Oxygen open. I've got NV Alt open. Like all these things. I'll see if I can keep adding in those to fix them. But like right now, that's a good that's a good fi fix for me to start with. Um, so cool. I like it. Let's uh, commit that and keep on moving. <laughs> 